Hi folks, Rich here. I hope you're all doing very well today. So I've created a macro toolbar for you folks in Studio One 5. It's called Sing a Songwriter. And the idea with this really is to help you get your ideas down quickly without getting bogged down in the detail too much. The macro toolbars are navigatable from this little button at the top in the center next to input quantize. We can navigate to any of our macros via the drop down here. I'm currently sitting on Singer Songwriter. The macro itself has a number of groups and I've tried my best to get these as sequential in regards to the record process as possible, although each person's workflow will vary a little bit. We can add instruments such as guitars, vocals, synthesizers, live drum tracks. Once recorded, we can then set the levels by normalizing and then setting the peak levels to minus 12 decibels. We can view a marker track if we'd like to, and at any point that we'd like to add a marker, we can simply click this button and the marker will be created on this track for you. This is extremely useful if trying to decide where your chorus might go. We might double click here and type in chorus. Once we've done that, we decide, well, yes, I'm quite happy with the chorus to be at bar 5, but I'd like to reintroduce it at bar 10, for example. So I could press D on the keyboard and just drag that over. It's duplicated it for me, so I don't need to redo it again. Okay, so what about the next section? Well, this chords or play along really is for yourself or a friend that, or that you've got recording with you at any one time. If, say for example, you've recorded a guitar part in and you'd like your friend or you'd like to follow along yourself, you can select the event and then select create a chord track and this will generate a chord track for you. When the chord track is created, it'll be visible in the top bar here, but you can also click on show or hide chords, which will give you a chord display here. And this will make it much easier to see what chord is being played and what chord is coming next. When you're happy that you've recorded everything, you can then create a bus for each of the sections for vocals, guitars, drums, and so on. This for me at least would be the most you would have to do in regards to mixing. But let's try an idea first of all. Let's add some instruments. So we'll add a guitar for left and right. And just something to bear in mind that if we go to the mix window here, the macros don't currently allow us to pan tracks or channels left and right. So we'll just need to pay attention to that when we add those in. If that's the hardest thing you have to do today, you're in good luck. Right, so we've got some guitars. I'm going to color these blue for now and I'll color my bass red, just so that I can distinguish them. How about adding some vocals? Well, let's add a female vocal as well as two backing tracks. Okay, so we've got our tracks in there. I'll color my vocals a nice hot pink. I might just uh, use a lighter shade for the backing vocals. Let's add a synth in, a pad perhaps. What I'll do for the pads is I'll probably just color these yellow. And then for the live drum tracks, we'll add in a kick, snare. We'll do each of the toms, floor and rack. We'll add in a nice hi-hat and some overheads. So for the drums, what I'll do is I'll take away the color for these and they'll just be gray or black. So now that we've got the parts actually added in, it's time to record. But before we do that, let's take a look at the mixer. So on the mixer, we've got the guitars here, the bass, the female vocal, the two backing tracks, and like we did before, it does say L and R, so let's pan those left and right. We've got the synthesizer here. The preset is already loaded for us. We're using this pad, mountain pad. All of the effects are included already for you, so you don't need to worry about what effect goes where. It should all work in most circumstances. Same applies to the drums as well. We've got a number of things on there, but generally it's more corrective things, such as EQ, limiters, mix tool, and fat channel. Now, as I don't have a female uh, voice, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in this female vocal here. 
handily it goes up to bar 9 so we'll create a loop point here and let's see for example we want to uh, record our backing tracks so we record our backing tracks in and as you can see these are not sort of prepared or normalized already and I hope with this we're able to sort of represent the recording process and it's very common for us to sing at different volumes or have instruments at different levels um, certainly when we're trying to uh, come up with song ideas as I say before we're not really focusing on the mix itself but actually getting the ideas down quickly so that we can use that as a basis to start from so we'll pop our drums in there assuming that we just recorded these in it's a fairly simple groove and a lot of this is gathered from the Persona Sphere sound library in the loops tab here so what about overheads let's get those fellas popped in and we've got some guitars to put in so let's throw a guitar in there we'll duplicate that just for now and what about adding a mandolin right down the center let's take a bass and pop that in too now okay so we've got all that popped in what about my tie are we really going to play everything in well we don't need to what we can do as i mentioned before is we can look at the chords or play along section here i've got the guitar selected here I could say create a chord track. If I'd like to, I could actually select these chords here and drag them directly into the VSTI channel. But I could also just simply take the guitar part now that I've detected the chords and drag that into there also. How neat is that? So, with that in mind, we can now show or hide the chords. We can see that the chords are displayed here as well as the chords that are about to be played. We can close that here or we can simply press that button again, toggle it. So how does it sound? Okay, so everything seems okay-ish, but as we mentioned before, the levels here do need some adjustment so let's select all of these tracks let's select normalize first of all that will normalize the tracks and at first it might seem very loud so what we'll do is we'll bring the peaks down by minus 12 decibels there we go should sound considerably better Okay, so it sounds yeah fairly good, uh, but what we could do is just take it one step further now that we've recorded our parts in. What we could do first of all is start adding in some bus tracks. We'll add one for vocals, guitars, we'll add one for drums and synth, one for bass and finally for backing vocals. So the bus tracks are visible within the mixer here and we can see that these also have the effects pre-applied to them, such as compressors and limiters. We have um, a little bit of EQ to the bass bus, and that's really just to add some bite back into the bass. But for the most part, it's limiting, and that's really just to control the levels and the peaks. So with that now done, we need to get these tracks that we've created into the bus tracks. If we hold the shift key, press the first guitar, and then press the last one, we can highlight all of those together. And then we can send the guitars to the guitar's bus. We'll do the same with the bass as well. The main vocal, we'll stick that into the vocals bus. And of course, we've got a backing vocals bus for our backing vocals. We'll put Mai Tai and we'll put this into our synths perhaps. And then with all the drums, we'll do like we did with the guitars. We'll press the first one and highlight it like this. Hold the shift key and then press the last one. We'll select bus drums. And now everything is rooted correctly into the bus tracks. So it should sound markedly different now. Okay, so it sounds reasonable maybe we would want to change some of the levels here. I personally in this instance would say that the synths need to come down a little bit. 
So I'll use my scroll wheel and I'll bring that down incrementally here. And maybe around about minus five decibels. Let's play it and make the adjustment as we do it. Okay, so very quickly there, with little adjustment, we've made a fairly comparable mix. What I'd like to do, just as one last little trick, is add a little bit of an effect to this. So we've got delay and reverb effects, and these are creating effects channels for us. Now, we can't just simply drag this like we do with other things. What we need to do is we need to look at the sends here. If we click the plus, we can see that all of our bus tracks and sends are available to us as well as side chains as well, if side chains are available in a plugin. But we want to focus here on the effects for delay and reverb. Now, it's usually um, sensible to put delay before reverb. It kind of sounds a little bit better, I should say. Um, but what we'd like to do is just solo this temporarily to see how it sounds on its own. I suspect that we may need to bring it down a little bit. Okay, we'll cheat it and we'll add this to the backing vocals by dragging it over. Add a reverb. Okay, so on the master bus, maybe we just add a limiter here and we could call it a day. We've wrote our song and we've got it ready to send to somebody. I'll set the threshold here to zero and let's play it back and just check that our limiter is not peaking. So even without any forethought or anything like that um, we've been able to get some pretty reasonable levels if we were to bring up say for example the level meter we can just take a look at that here So we're sitting very comfortably between minus 12 and minus 9 decibels um, RMS. Um, and this is wonderful. Um, it means that we have uh, a mix that's loud enough um, to be published to somewhere like SoundCloud or YouTube um, and to be shared with our friends. It doesn't mean that it's mastered. It doesn't mean that it's perfect. Um, but it does mean that you've cut out a lot of the work that you would have had to have done to get it there. You're saving yourself enough time to focus more on the songwriting and getting things recorded. So I hope this is of some use to you. I'll put some links in the description as to where you can find this via the exchange or your sphere exchange um, on personas.com. Have fun making music. See you soon.